Acting Captain's Log, Stardate 43992.6. Admiral Hansen has repaired the second officer. Which second officer is needed to repair? Is that data? I think that might be data. Aw, poor data. This is Podkit, episode 18, using Bitcoin to escape volatility, on Sunday, January 31st, 2016. And now, SE stands for small, extremely. This episode of Podkit is hosted by Max Fierke, Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Ramperson. This episode has show notes at thenexus.tv slash pk18. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. What's up? Is that a new voice? Who's that? Who's what? that? It is a new voice. It's me. It's, it's Max. Fierke. Hi, Max. Max. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. This is a very special episode of Podkit. Is indeed. Is this is this your first uh, show on the Nexus? Uh, yeah, probably. Nice. Unless, unless, on it, unless he did another show <laughs> secretly, that's pretty pretty probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like it. No, no, I yeah, on. no. Nice. Well, we welcome you to both the network and the show. That's pretty good. Thanks. I feel welcomed. So what's what's new the last week ish or two or three? Episode? It's been a while. Oh. However, yeah, yeah. There's tons of stuff, including but not. Wait, wait. We two. had follow up. We had follow up. We did. Up. I, it's yeah. In my inbox. Okay. Well, you're in charge. Long. From uh, Ian Buck with regards to Cognitive episode seventeen. Um, wait. Yes, that was the last one. Uh, let me see what. Oh, it's about hamburger controls. He says, as an experienced quote, as an experienced user, I like having hamburger menus because it gets all the controls out of the way into a list that I know will contain everything I need. I can focus on the content most of the time and go into the menu when I need to. Uh, yes. So Ian is a fan of hamburger menu. I think it's a good way of tucking things away, but I think there's also like an interface war between people who like hamburgers and don't. Yeah. So that brings up a good point. Hey, Max, what do you think of hamburgers? Um, I love the food. Uh, big fan of <laughs> big fan of the menu. Actually, I do as as a, as a user interface uh, design um, motif. I like it. hides hides the important things in a drawer, and I like being able to go to a universal indicator that there's stuff in that drawer that I want to look at. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like it. I have I have to say I'm still on I'm still on the uh on team share sheet and I've been even more on team share sheet mostly because uh that's what I've been using so frequently as I've been kind of transitioning away from my MacBook and towards uh working on iPad only um which I should probably mention somewhere else at some point but Are you pulling um, a Federico? I I am trying to pull a Federico. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. yep. You betcha. I wrote uh let's see three out of my last four papers on uh on my ipad only and and uh used and a hamburger still have hands? once i still have hands well you know i'm using my magic keyboard oh right it's magical right. okay there you go <laughs> but there, i'm trying to uh i'm trying to find this there was this awesome um hamburger hamburger and hamburger uh sweater that was uh published on uh cotton bureau and i ordered one and i really want to show you guys but i don't did i tweet about that did you guys end up seeing yeah, that I don't one? Think you've so. been retweeting a few cotton brew bro i don't know how but it's, how it's pronounced. <laughs> you've yeah, been retweeting got, several shirts here been... yeah, here, here's here's your link it's in the in the nice. notes there yep that's the one it's called delicious navigation oh yeah i remember this one <laughs> headed straight for my face. Somehow and they only managed to sell weeks. 45. It's a shame. I know. I was the last one. I was the last order. <laughs> you know, that, that, is that, that joke is going to be wasted on so many people. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know. But next time we have to, next time we go to a usability session, I'm going to wear that thing and <laughs> the other two people in the room are going to laugh. And that will make that <laughs> the other yeah, two people $20 in the worthwhile. Room. Yeah. <laughs> My my boss and my coworker. Yep, they'll both laugh. Very nice. 
<laughs> a cultural investment. Right. right. I, yeah, it's. I, I'm gonna file that under uh, JavaScript Minnesota attire. Nice. So. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And then somebody else can wear the uh, Daring Fireball Star T-shirt. Right. Right. Somebody was wearing an uh, ES6. Oh yeah, it was uh, it was Todd Gardner from uh, TrackJS. You guys remember he? Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. When you guys were there, he 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 did the presentation. He was rocking a really awesome k- kind of um, uh, uh, destroy all software inspired shirt about JavaScript weirdnesses. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Not not only is Todd Gardner uh, a very cool person, um, he was rocking a very cool shirt at JavaScript Minnesota. Fun fact. So uh, that this concludes the uh, the uh, JavaScript Minnesota Fashion Show segment of PodKit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there's a couple other things that are probably worth talking about, including but not limited to iAds. Um, or rather, iAd, uh, what, what do they call it? iAd Affiliate Network? IAD, yeah, something like that. iAd App Network or something. Even though yeah. iAd remains sort of but sort of doesn't well a week ago a week ago Mm -hmm. uh, there was a uh, posting that said on the apple support pages somewhere that the iads network would be ending sometime and everybody was either happy or terribly sad and here we are and still not knowing for sure what's happening half i i read the, the bulletin and half paid attention to it a week ago and that was the only time i've looked at it and what I gathered is they're completely shutting it down in June or something, but it sounds like everyone else is more unsure. So I really don't know what to what to believe. Right, right, right. So I, I think I think they talked about this either on ATP or on uh, one of the other shows around town. And I think that uh, I've got the statement here from the Daring Fireball link, and um, it looks like what they mean is that they're shutting down the app network, which is a thing that you would that would allow you to like submit your app to be featured within iads in the app store like native i native advertising iads i know native advertising is kind of a weird marketing term are you guys familiar with that and what that means kind of i don't know how much it gets into the cultural zeitgeist but i know that it's been drilled into my brain through a multitude of sjmc professors (laughs) well that's that's true i mean we would know most people wouldn't so maybe you should tell everybody else yeah. All right. So uh, native advertising is basically, um, if you've ever read a BuzzFeed article, you've probably experienced native advertising. It's a thing wherein um, through the course of just consuming media in general, there's something placed within that media that looks like a regular piece of content that you would otherwise like to consume, uh, but it's actually an advertisement that's been sponsored by a company or some entity. So like an example would be on BuzzFeed, if you see like, oh, top 21 ways to eat a Burger King Whopper, um, you might not notice that that's like an ad or you might notice that it's an ad because it says Burger King. Um, But Burger King could like pay for somebody at BuzzFeed to write that article, even though it sounds totally vapid and content free. Uh, That's what happens when I try to make stuff up on the fly. But, you know, um, that's sort of the gist of native advertising. Yeah. Or at least that's that's how we've studied it. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So, do we want iAds to close? Like, if that was a thing that was happening, do we want that? Do we want no more Apple ads? As that's a non-Apple developer, at least as of yet, I don't really care. I think the Apple ones look. I I don't know. I have. I just have the feeling that they're somehow better because they're first party, just like lighter on your device. But I. I don't know anything about how any ad networks really work on mobile. So who knows? <laughs> so I say this with uh, precisely zero uh, references to where I heard it, but um, I believe it was ATP where they discussed how the point of iAd was to be like the, as, as Brian kind of mentioned, the ad network that was easy on your phone and respectful of you and stuff. Um, but one of the tricks with it is that it's very hard to fill iAd slots with more iAds. So what developers are then uh, essentially forced to do is include a backup ad network. And that's all well and good, except for when you realize that most of these other networks are nothing even remotely like what iAd uh, usually does. Basically, it's it's either Google or some other mobile ad provider's ads, uh, and they are the ones that take over, and that's not awesome. 
Um, I feel like that was on ATP, but Ryan, yeah, thank you. Hear that? Yeah, I don't, I don't. Or remember. under the radar? I don't know what it was. Yeah, I don't remember hearing it on yeah. ATP, but it could have happened. I think it was under the radar. I think you're right, Brian. <laughs> yeah. That probably explains why it's in my brain as somebody from ATP saying it, even though it wasn't ATP. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's what I had heard. But again, I can't I mean, point to where I heard it. <laughs> I'm not even in the ecosystem and I would be okay with IADS closing. I don't think it yeah. I don't think it's uh a big deal really for Apple. Uh uh-huh. they I'm I'm sure they don't you know, most developers on the Apple platform are saying, Yes, please pay us real money. Stop this ad stuff. So I don't know. What do you think, Max? Uh, I mean, it kind of makes sense, I guess. Like, uh, you know, Apple's not known as a company that provides ad services, right? So any anything that they do would be kind of a, a half implementation, right? Like a, they're not putting their full Apple force behind it. So it kind of right. makes sense that they, you know, uh, chop it off. They're not Google. And Google, like, basically controls, like, 85% of the like ad traffic on the internet these days or something like that. Right. So right. it's better. I think it's one of those cases where it's like better leaving it to someone that is in the business and knows exactly what to do and how to grow that, you know, particular piece of um, the ecosystem. So yeah, it seems like the right move for them. Hopefully uh, mm-hmm. other network ads can't leave the system uh, speaker on for 30 minutes after it's been closed. <laughs> Or the yeah, system uh, a... recorder <laughs> mic. Wait, there's ads that are opening microphone? Well, I'm making a Facebook reference. and Right, oh, right, yeah. right. That sounds they say it wasn't on purpose, but you never know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> In fact, we know that we don't know. We know. See, that's why I don't put Facebook on my phone anymore. Yeah, exactly. Don't yep. do that. I don't, I don't trust them. Tinfoil hat brigade. Whoop, whoop. Well, <laughs> actually, I'm high fiving right now. Yeah, actually, it's not even tinfoil hat. It, it's literally the app I use is called Tinfoil for Facebook. Nice. <laughs> I've been using the uh, the mobile Facebook yep. web for like a couple of years now, and I just it does everything I need it to. Yeah, right? and I Same. look at it once a day at at most, and I'm okay with that. Same. I actually forget about Facebook as frequently as possible it's awesome <laughs> so it's liberating. the healthiest thing for you right right oh man as long as twitter's around we'll be fine yeah poor yeah. twitter actually that's, down, though. that's been a that's been kind of a thing in the news recently is about how like people are uncertain about twitter's future oh, and yeah. it's making me very nervous yeah right there was a what, four people on their board of directors or senior vice president board or whatever it is left i think all at the right. same time Right, it was their uh, some of their communications and HR folks, I believe. Uh, their their like head of HR um, and head of I forget the word and like their head of engineering too. I thought so. Yeah, like, pretty, yeah, pretty pretty key folks. Yeah, I I think Twitter is going through some changes right now, and hopefully it's for the best. But time will tell. Right, right. I mean, without Twitter, where will I? You know, dump my inane thoughts. Peach, of course. <laughs> oh, does that I still, still have it on my phone? I haven't gotten on that Peach guy yet. I've, I've been oh, thinking man. about it. I had it one is... friend who was on it, and we discovered that if you block someone, you can still look at their profile. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know if that's still open or not, but. Did uh, I don't yeah. think you added me yet, Brian, but I. You yeah, did come I... up as a like ad friend suggestion. Really? Oh, gosh darn it. What's you your username? I'll, I'll add you. <laughs> as ever, as ever, it's Brandon underscore men. It's the only, uh, yeah. Oh. Is, this only, is this only for iPhone? I think it might be. Yeah, it is. Ah, as far as okay, I know, yeah. Cool. All right, I don't get to be part of the cool new social network then. No. Maybe, maybe soon, though, uh, unless it dies off quickly. That's what but I'm hoping literally, for. Literally, yeah. it's pretty much... Like just just it's, go it's ahead and, and die off. It's okay. Are you guys on yeah. Ello at all? Oh, you well, bet. I have <laughs> it. I have it. I've never signed in before or since. <laughs> I I was. I don't even know where. If I still have my account info saved or not. You know, I, I get the. We, tent, we did tent.io. Yeah, run that was a, a long ago. time ago. And then I signed up for Emojily, 
That was like <laughs> right. the best the best thing. That was Tom Scott and uh, I don't remember his name. They do uh, right. park and park bench like video podcast right now on YouTube, and that's quite entertaining. Right, right, right. See, I was um, I was monorail sushi police on Emojly. It was awesome. Wow, living the dream. I, I think I, I was the yeah. ABCD one two three four emojis. Nice, that's awesome. And something to do with uh, uh, the pile of poo emoji. <laughs> I think I signed up, but I quickly forgot whatever my characters were. Nice. Hmm. Let's see. A couple other things uh, that are coming up include some fun iPhone rumors. Yes, iPhone. I'm gonna go a little bit. I'm gonna go a little bit out of order and talk about the headphone jack first. Yeah, let's do that. Because um, I know a lot of people have like very visceral reactions to um, the uh, whole loss of the headphone thing. But I am currently listening to this conversation on Bluetooth headphones, and I am totally addicted to Bluetooth headphones. Um, so of course, like the jerk I am, I was like, oh, well, it's fine. We'll just, we'll just use Bluetooth headphones and everything will be all right. Uh, no sooner did that happen than my Bluetooth headphones broke in two and, um, and, uh, they, they were no longer functional as uh, Bluetooth headphones L- later. Of course they were fixed, but it was just like, huh, maybe, uh, yeah. So, um, Lots of schadenfreude seem to have been happening, and uh, lots lots of karma right back at me, right as I was saying this. So what do you guys think? Uh, is this a credible thing? I know Christina Warren kind of uh, had a nice piece talking about the why they might do it and why they might not do it. Um, I'll try to find that for the notes, but I'm interested to hear your guys' perspective. What did you think? So let's mention think, first what they're really going to do. So the rumor is that the next set of iPhones will not have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Mm-hmm. So how do you feel about that? I think um, I think just the amount of people talking about it uh, brings a lot of credibility to the rumor, maybe. I don't know, though. That isn't necessarily true. But probably because it's so controversial of a topic. I think it would be okay if it was removed, but with the assumption that they were very readily available, cheap or free included, adapters for 3.5 millimeter because i think it will take just like the lightning connector and um usb type c that's currently in the process it'll take a few years to go through a bunch of hardware until everyone's kind of at the same page again yeah um but i think i I have been thinking about looking at bluetooth headphones i've been like i've been meaning to look into them i haven't bought them and i'm not really intending on buying any yet but it's been on my mind so I think it'll eventually be a good thing. The main concern I have is the ease to tap into, um, like I work in the tech in the student center. And so if I want to plug in my phone to the sound system, I, there's, you know, the, the, the board there doesn't have Bluetooth. So it's, right. it needs wired connections have a place and something like, I think, podcasting you know we need a direct clean clear connection for mm-hmm. the kind of casual stuff i think bluetooth or whatever is going to be fine but then you know lightning connected devices are probably going to replace 3.5 millimeter for a wired connection so however um then cross device compatibility is kind of broken and so you have a pair of headphones that's just for iphone yeah mm-hmm. that's so weird anything else and so i think the whole industry needs to agree on something that's better rather than Apple saying, use this, if everyone is going to switch to something that is universally compatible again. Right, right, definitely. Yeah, that's what I fear. I fear that they're going to have to agree on something, and they're going to agree that they're disagreeing, and they'll just make two of every headphone, and it's going to be awful. Right, like like when you go to Walgreens or whatever, and they have the lightning cable and the micro USB cable right next to each other on the, like, cheap tech... Yeah, uh, and by cheap you mean there. for $14.99 yeah. for a 3 foot cable. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, cheap as in expensive cables cheaply made. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, and uh, doesn't doesn't Apple have to don't they they pay like fines to the European um parliament or something like that because of the fact that they don't use the micro USB for charging? I didn't so I'm wondering that. I didn't wonder like going to be yeah, they do. They have to. They have to pay like um, I don't know if it's a fine, but they have to pay a fee basically. Because I know they ha- they they have to include the adapter to to micro USB. I know they have to do that, but oh, I didn't even realize they did that. So maybe they used to have to pay a thing, and then the adapter yeah 
allowed them to not have to. But I'm wondering if it's going to create some sort of like, uh, you know, thing with the U European Parliament where they're like, oh, this is a monopoly. You're trying to create a new standard or whatever. We don't want you doing that. I would be uh, all for the EU saving us from this trouble. <laughs> I would too, because frankly, like the thing I like about having my, like, I've got a bunch of nice, like 3.5 millimeter yep. studio headphones mm -hmm. that I like to bring everywhere. I like knowing that if I have a single pair of headphones, I'm going to be able to use it when I go on a plane. I can use it on a phone. I can use it with my laptop. I can use it with someone else's computer, yep. you know, whatever. And so, um, yeah, like the Bluetooth audio might be cool if they innovate on it a little bit and make it a little bit less, um, I don't know. Uh, unreliable because I, I hear there are some issues with connectivity and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, but it is kind of a like I've, I'm actually thinking about getting an iPhone in the next year or so, and this is kind of making me wonder if I should. Well, and I, of course, I if use they my did phone it, to listen to music and stuff. So. And if they did it, you know that the year after, everybody else would have to do it too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking. I'll probably be end up getting the iPhone Seven when it comes out this fall. But uh, yeah, the audio jack, if there's not a real good solution and they do remove it, I'll be a bit hesitant for sure. Yeah, it's, I am I think so it's see what they do. <laughs> yeah, I just despite my rather harrowing experience this week, uh, I have to say I am so ready for the iPhone 7 to ditch the headphone jack, uh, just waiting for it to match my, my watch and I can live in that awesome little uh, plexigra plexiglass uh, world of Johnny Ive. I'm so ready. <laughs> I I will say I will probably get the iPhone 7 regardless and I say that I'll be considering it but I really won't. <laughs> Brandon, do you use the Bluetooth headphones with your watch ever? You bet. I actually use my watch as a go-between uh, for my phone and my headphones so I can pair my headphones with my watch and then so long as my watch is paired with my phone I can tell it to output the audio from my phone to my watch without actually having to pair my headphones with Ooh. my phone. Do you which... use like the AirPlay menu kind of thing on Control right. Center? Awesome. Right, right, exactly. Yep, cool. yep, it's awesome, and I love it. So that allows me to like leave my phone in my bag charging because my 5S uh, dies every 45 minutes, and uh, and uh, that then I can just always, always, always control music from my watch and. It's just fine. Um, nice. Yeah. So in other words, I use my watch as uh, iPhone life support, kind of, <laughs> for better <laughs> or worse. But, yep. Yeah, there are just so many There's... problems with, with going headphone jackless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's a good deal. I mean, I feel like if the audio quality is good, I'd maybe be into it. Like, uh, I've ruined a lot of audio jacks in my Android phones. Oh, definitely. Instance. Oh, yeah with the 3.5. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like I, I went through two Nexus 4s, breaking the iPhone or breaking the headphone jack in both of them. Um, I went through another one. I went through like three different music players that couldn't mm -hmm. handle 3.5 on my headphone. So if, if like Audio Technica or someone comes out with like nice enough Bluetooth headphones or whatever that work with the iPhone 7, I might be into it. I might just say, I'll bite the bullet and you know buy an iphone with the fancy new headphones and stuff like that but it's you know still makes me skeptical last uh last right. spring i bought um august headphones and what i liked about them was that they came with bluetooth they were bluetooth headphones but then it also came with a 3.5 millimeter patch cable thing so that i could plug that in to it and then to the phone and just bypass all the bluetooth completely if I wanted yeah, to, my, pretty fancy. My Sony headphones, my Sony headphones do the same thing, but of course, as part of my tale of woe, all of my patch cables are totally fried, including the one that I was using not too long ago, which I thought was the cause of the buzzing we were having uh, early on in the recording, but unfortunately, it was not, which seems to just be my USB hub. Um, but that's that's the one trick for me, and because I am my my rage against patch cables is stronger than my uh, problems with Bluetooth, I'm. Uh, I'm still very pro uh, pro Bluetooth headphones, even though I totally agree that uh, losing the headphone jack is going to be not awesome if it happens. Well, we'll have to see. Indeed. Mm -hmm. One last comment. I think if it is removed, I'm just curious what Apple will ship for headphones with the phones. 
because currently, you know, they have their uh, uh, ear pods that yep. are they retail for thirty dollars. I'm sure they're much cheaper, but I think they're they're pretty good when it comes to included earbuds. Um, right. And then, so you know, Bluetooth things are going to be more expensive, so it might be like a, a better deal to get your headphones with an iPhone, and so that kind of would jumpstart everything. But um, I'm not sure what they're going to do. I think aren't Bluetooth earbuds pretty expensive if they exist at all? Yeah, I think that's a huge design problem that I, we don't know whether they've solved or not because, like, the trick is very. It seems like the general opinion is that the Bluetooth earbuds that kind of have a string attached, uh, like a like a, a cable attaching them, right, aren't terribly popular. I guess there's a there's a whole wire wire cutter guide on them, so perhaps I'm incorrect about that. But there was some talk about having the earbuds so that they could like separately exist in your ear. Um, and there's been a bunch of a uh, bunch of those coming yeah. out. I, I saw some at uh, CES. And I know there right, were some right. Kickstarters that were doing that last year. So that is definitely a, a, an option. But from what right. I've seen, it's very limited. And those are also $200. So I don't exactly. know about that. And they probably have tiny batteries that will wear out over time. And so it's in the end, it's, you know, you you have to deal with wireless connectivity issues, charging uh, a more, a much shorter term battery, you know, life of your earbuds because of batteries and then, Oh, one one died. Does the other one? Does it matter if the other one has died too, or who knows? Right. Well, how much, right. How much oh does God. a battery in like a Bluetooth headset last? Um. Well, I've used. I'm able to use my. Do you mean like in use or like longevity? Well, well, both. I guess. Like you know, the ones that just go in your ear. Uh. Well, I mean, my my headset, uh, my Bluetooth headphones can last a, a, for my use a week, but for somebody playing heavily, you know, maybe a few days. Yeah. I would agree with that. My uh, my headphones, which are Sony MDR10 RBTs, uh, they last about a week, week and a half, two weeks on a charge. Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty good. And of course, uh, I've had Bluetooth 2.1 headphones and 4.1 headphones, and the 4.1 are definitely more power efficient because they last way longer. So By far, yeah. So there is that. So if there's another Bluetooth standard, maybe more power consumption can be trimmed off. But cool, yeah. So more rumors? More rumors indeed. Okay, well, so the next rumor is about the next set of iPhones, and this includes, in addition to the current two sizes, another size, which will be a 4-inch iPhone called, allegedly, the 5S E. What do you think? I, I think... Yeah. You, you go, Brandon. No, you go, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Was okay. was did Max did Max try to get in there? Or, no, I didn't. Oh, I know I heard you. That was that was on me. <laughs> I swear I heard Max. I'm sorry. Uh, er. Who? <laughs> what? Can you guys so, hear me? Yeah, it's yeah, time. You words. <laughs> it's you, Brandon. Sorry, I had to unplug and plug back in. I oh. think I was not functioning. No problem. Sorry, gang. Uh, so this is about the the four inch iPhone, right? Yeah, four the inch iPhone. SE. It's called the 5SE, uh, same 1136 by 640 resolution. Okay, what do you think? See, I really like my 5S, but the more I've used it, the more I found it to be cramped. I can't wait to get a iPhone 6 sized iPhone. Those are my quick thoughts. (laughs) I think it's likely that there'll be a 4 inch phone just because um, I know some people have really liked the larger ones, but some people have also not liked that they're larger. Um, I think the name 5SE is absurd, not accurate in any way. It's referencing the iPhone 5S, but it would be more powerful than the 5S. And E, what does that mean? And it's a four-inch screen, so why call it 5SE? So what would you call um, it? So the, the, the base iPhone is just the iPhone number. The next uh, bigger size is the plus. So what would you call the smaller one? Oh, I would totally call it a six minus. <laughs> All day. Maybe, maybe SE stands for small extreme weight. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it would also be weird Special to call Special edition. It, it would also be weird to call it the S because it would be always one off from the current generation. So the next iPhone will be the iPhone 7. But if they released it as the iPhone 5SE, it would always be 
numbers behind and weirdly lettered. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it would be some play on the iPhone 7 to bring that it's the same generation. I, I don't know if they would call it the iPhone 7 4 or that's probably not realistic no. either. Who knows? Like, could they call it the 7? Yeah, 7M. That might be that. I, who knows? Could they call it Mini? Like iPhone 7 Mini? Yeah. Or, well, uh, what other. I think that's pretty likely. Because they, they have they an iPad Nano, Mini. Or they could do the iPhone 7 Shuffle. <laughs> the uh, that's iPhone. No, that, that's, the, that's the Apple Watch, yeah. <laughs> the iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Air, iPhone 6 Pro. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I or I guess 7 Pro, 7, and 7. Yeah, uh, I, I like Mini better, but. I, I feel like Mini is probably uh, something they'd use. It's from their lexicon. Yeah. That seems fair. They could always so, go and do Power Phone 4. <laughs> oh, God. So they also have some uh, projected specs here. So they suspect that an A8, uh, an, an updated 8-megapixel rear camera, 1.2-megapixel front camera, NFC, and Apple Pay. So how do, how do you feel about including those things in it? So that's the innards of an iPhone 6 with the A8. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that sounds pretty fair. I think... Um, they will definitely regret it down the line because if you see the 4S now, it should not be running iOS 9. Um, Indeed. But so I'm I'm always against shipping two-year-old hardware. I think one-year-old is maybe okay, but two is really kind of pushing it, especially with the huge jumps that Apple's made in the last couple of generations. Right, right. So what if they did something like... Uh, so what, what, what A are we on now? We're on A9, right? A9, yeah. So... They launched. It matches the iOS version. So okay, so they launched the uh, iPhone Seven Mini with the A9, and the new iPhones get the A10. Yeah, I think that would so make sense. It. That'd be okay. And they might be able to offset the. They can get better performance because it's a smaller screen resolution. Yeah, assuming it's the same as the the iPhone Five Five S. So it it might even out in the end. Who knows. So what, what do you think mm. about pricing? Do you think they would have a it would be in any way significantly cheaper or just a hundred dollars cheaper? I could see this being potentially the um, uh, what do you call it? C- kind of like what the uh, five uh, five C is now, like the the really 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 entry level one, possibly even with a plastic case. Um, well, the five C was replacing the five. So when the five S came out, the five was no longer for sale, and the five C was the one hundred dollar phone. So it wasn't the right, really right. cheap; it was just like the the year old version. Because the iPhone, the hundred dollars off. The iPhone six S costs uh, six forty nine now off contract. So would they be oh, able to? Okay. Would they be able to sell a smaller iPhone for five hundred? Would they want see, to do right, that? Right, right. Four ninety nine or five forty nine is what I would guess. Yeah. That would yeah, be if they did a four forty nine. Yeah. If they did a four forty nine, I bet that would be a pretty competitive. I, I think that would be amazing. Offering. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. I, I, I just, I'm still I wonder on if they would go through, mode, so. <laughs> I wonder if they would uh, go for that little profit margin. I don't know how well, cheaply they can make yeah, it. Yeah, so that's the thing. We don't know what the profit margin necessarily is. Mm-hmm. They love their great profit margins, though, that's for sure. They do. Profits on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> Capitalism is bay? Is that... Is that- I think that's I think that's what they say. Yeah, <laughs> you know they have three sizes of iPad now, and we know those don't sell at all. So <laughs> they should totally have a third size iPhone. It makes sense. Why not? Yeah. That's time to catch up. I mean, they, they got to burn some of that cash, right? No, <laughs> no, because it's going to burn when it hits all our taxes, <laughs> right? That's that's not going to happen. Oh, too bad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh-huh. now I think it's time to move to some web stuff, eh? Oh yeah, Unless let's 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 do that. Yeah, let's, web is good. Uh, so first, of, first and foremost, our good buddy Brendan Ike, who spells his first name wrong, um, uh, <laughs> made a I new see. browser. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pronounced Brandon. Oh, uh, for the record, is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. There there is no Brendan. They're just mistaken, folks. Um, <laughs> uh, Bre- so Brend- Brendan Ike uh, has uh, built a new browser called Brave that uh, is vaguely Firefox slash Chrome-ish. 
I've heard that they took different parts of Chrome and different parts of Firefox for different parts of the browser. So for example, I think the iOS one is almost exactly a clone of Firefox for iOS. Yep. Um, and the other parts of it do other things, but that's not that's not necessarily even the most interesting part. Uh, it includes a lot of uh, what one could consider um, security best practices by default, including uh, the HTTPS Everywhere plugin that uh, the uh, EFF kind of built um, by default. So if HTTPS is available, you will use it. Uh, and they replace advertisements uh, where possible with advertisements that Brave sets up on their own. That's at least what it sounds like. Um, I'm really interested to hear what you guys think about this because there is a lot to unpack here. Yeah, so let's 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 go over the the main thing. So it's it's a new browser. And it has nothing to do with Mozilla, although the guy who was CEO of Mozilla for a while and who made JavaScript <laughs> did it. So that's there's that. Uh, one mm-hmm. of its key features is that it will allow you to natively block ads but it'll Uh also allow you to replace those ads and in this convoluted very strange way you can get money for replacing ads somehow and then you can pay websites kind of like a a monthly tip if you like them right so uh what do you think the economics of that are seem very or perhaps not the economics is the wrong word the marketing logistics of that sound very very fragile don't you Um, feel like it's really optimistic right right yeah yeah so i i i I feel yeah go ahead (laughs) you go max (laughs) okay um so i i kind of feel like it's uh it's a little bit concerning as to how they're um Obviously, I don't know anything about the logistics of how they're implementing this, but it seems like they have to track users somehow and their preferences for websites and whether or not they show ads Yep, and that kind of thing. So it seems a little bit dubious there. Yeah, so they address that. And so what they say is that their servers never get to know who you are. The browser will track you, but only on the browser. So when you do a Google search for shoes, it'll know that you did a Google search for shoes, but it won't tell anybody. Mm. And then when... So so that's what they say, but then of course, how do they get the ads to show you stuff about shoes? Doesn't doesn't the doesn't the request for shoes ads tell somebody that you wanted to know about shoes? So it's it's not right. it, it it doesn't quite make sense to me how that works. But you know, maybe it maybe there's a thing about it. I feel like they're trying to appeal to users who aren't very happy with the current state of ads, but would still like to support the websites they use. And so this is an attempt to do that. However, it yeah, it's weird for tracking and um, the whole payback thing is kind of. I haven't read too much on it, but it seems it seems a little shady. And I don't think ad networks will be very happy to. Well, they might. I don't think websites will be very happy because it, of course, gives the ability to block everything by default as well. Right. Well, people already have that ability. It's not. It's not too strange on iOS. Uh, we were just talking about killing off iAds, yeah. but on iOS, Apple basically gave people the ability to block ads natively now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's it's more like the replacing, you know, if if you're good, it will give you money in, for, in the form of tips. So the users have to do it. And so I think it's just going to be, I don't know, if it catches on, I just see that a lot of websites will be bugging you to give them tips. or. So they say that... Uh, they're, they're... It seems like a... A new, a new mess to the whole ad thing. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It feels like a whole new mess. So they say that replacing ads means you get the same gross rev, ad revenue share that they do. So Brave is making money off of ad placement when you replace them. And then uh, they say that they're trying to give 45 or so share to the site the ad is on. Mm-hmm. So that's a little sketchy there too, right? Yeah. So basically they're taking 45% of the traffic that the website would get if they weren't browsing with Brave. Right. Something like that. I'm not good at math, but that seems like a, it seems like they're, they're basically, they're saying, oh yeah, no, we'll, we'll take part of your traffic. You still get a little, when in reality, if you just weren't using Brave browser, the website would get 100%. Yeah, right, and, then right. do, and then how do you pay? Like, Brave obviously would get all the money because they're running the ad, they're injecting into it, and then do they just send to every website a letter in the mail saying, here's well, money? 
they address that too. And so what they say is, uh, you, you, everybody gets, so every user of Brave, and this isn't implemented yet, I guess, because we're only in point zero seven, but they say by point one, we will have this. Everybody will be getting right. a BitGo wallet. And so apparently it's a Bitcoin wallet. And every user will get an ID when they install Brave for the first time that, again, is not tracked by their server. It's browser only. So that's pretty fishy right there. But you get this yeah. Go wallet or BitGo wallet and the revenues get deposited into the wallet. <laughs> and then and, and then and if you thought that was bad, here's the even worse part. So then every subdomain or domain will get its own BitGo wallet. And the revenues will get implement or pushed into those site based wallets. And then if you some uh, somehow authenticate with them, I guess you can claim that money. Oh, okay. wow. I, I, I want to keep my Google tracking. I'm, <laughs> I'm right. Google knows how to sell me ads and I'm just going to let them keep doing that. Cause this sounds way sketchier. I, I mean, not only does it sound sketchy, <laughs> without seeing how it's actually implemented, I just can't imagine it actually working. Yeah. So you, you, yeah, that's, that's so fishy about this to me in general is because so many people that are working on this are like EFF folks, right? So, like, EFF. Do, are you guys familiar with readability at all? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think readability had something sort of similar to this. So they would. Uh, this was back in the day. I don't know what the current system's like, but they would right. allow you to go up to a website, click their little bookmark or plug-in. They would strip all the ads out and just keep the content and then show it to you in a pretty font on a black screen or white screen. And then somehow you would pay readability and then they would give money to the website you stripped all the stuff off of. Right. And then that website right. would have to go sign up to readability to claim that money. And apparently yeah. everybody was super angry. And it feels right. very similar. And they probably required every website to put a readability button on their website if they wanted to have the account or something. Oh, 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 this just in. A new Brave update just happened. And I'm going to hit update now. See what happens. Nice. Oh, it oh so you're already rocking it. Yeah, I, nice. I have it here on the Mac. Okay. It installed. There's nothing different. <laughs> Well, wow. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so they they have uh, builds for uh, OS X and Windows already. Uh, they will have builds for iOS and Android eventually. And uh, yeah. And Linux, it looks like, too. So I guess we're very excited for this. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> See, like, like Jan from the EFF, she is... Yeah, right. She's involved in this. And like... She is awesome, like a total rock star. So but, maybe the maybe like, the EF yeah. EFF folks are are coming to it like, well, if it allows blocking as an option, everybody can just click that and avoid all this weird right. replacement stuff. Right, right. And you know, I don't think they said anywhere. At least I haven't read it. If they did, they don't say what happens if you don't claim your money. So presumably, they get to keep it, and right. maybe that's also what they're banking on. They're just right. hoping no one wants to deal with all of the Bitcoin stuff. I mean, and then they'll just so keep it all. They said uh, somewhere, I have no idea where I read it, but they said they're using Bitcoin initially to avoid market vo uh, volatility. And I don't know about you, but have you met Bitcoin lately? <laughs> it, seems, it seems like you'd be yeah, experiencing more volatility than ever yeah. by using Bitcoin. But whatever, to each their own, I guess. But maybe on the other hand, maybe they figure... It's cheaper to do a Bitcoin transaction than to get charged two percent for every point five cents you send to somebody. Right, right. Mm. Maybe, but yes. uh, I don't. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Like banks aren't accepting Bitcoin yet, are they? No. So nope. then you're gonna have to go to some exchange to get your Bitcoin out right. into real money, and you know that's shady. Yeah, because all the, all the all the money that's like in. All the, all the value that's held by Bitcoin is because you met some guy at a coffee shop, paid him cash money, and he gave you Bitcoins from his wallet. Like, it's all it all runs on money laundering, basically. Well, that's right. great. So right. now Brandon right. can go to his coffee shop <laughs> and get his Bitcoin. Yeah, actually, Brandon, wow. I, we got to meet on Saturday about that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Man, I, I don't know if anyone in Northrop, uh, what's, what's the likelihood that anyone other than my uh, academic advisor knows what Bitcoin is? Because I do happen to know that my academic advisor does know about Bitcoin because we ranted about it at our last advising appointment. As you can tell, we're very productive. Um, uh, finance students know about it, for sure. Yeah? Oh, well, that's yeah. good. That's I mean, they, they probably don't like it. but they, And they're probably going to say that it. sounds like a really bad idea when you tell them about Brave. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, this is, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to see how this develops, and so I yeah. I think I, we're at we're at version seven point eleven now, so we're ramping up to one. Ooh, ooh, does, yeah. Does version seven point eleven give you slushies? Question. Uh, here, let me type it into the address <laughs> bar. Does this browser give me slushies? Uh, Googling. Nope. Uh, no, 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 no results. No. What? Uh, th- what do they call it? The the big the big slurp or whatever. What's the what's the Seven Eleven thing? Nah, never mind. Big gulp. <laughs> big gulp. Big gulp. Thank you. We don't yeah. have Seven Elevens here. Yeah, I have no idea why I know that. Yeah, it's the tell. worst group to make that reference with. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. And I just I used a lot of Seven Elevens last time, last semester in Europe, but that's so weird that you have them in Europe but not in Minnesota. They were like every block, every block. I bought my SIM card at the Seven Eleven. <laughs> They have everything there. That's funny. That sounds like a country song. <laughs> I don't think a person in the country is going to be buying a SIM card. <laughs> uh, techno country. I would oh, listen to oh, oh, techno the country. One, the, one, the one kind of country music I would listen to. Techno country. Um, anyhow, we've got one more topic before I totally go off the rails. Um, and that is that uh, the Node Foundation, the Node.js Foundation, has uh, a couple of new uh, representatives. Uh, these are folks who, so back in the day, it used to be that you could only um, uh, be, become a part of the Node Foundation if you were a company, right? There wasn't like an individual membership thing. But recently, they've added a uh, individual membership thing, and they've added spots for individual members on the board of directors. A couple, uh, a bunch rather, of really cool people uh, ran for this. Uh, one person in particular who we mentioned previously is Ashley Williams, AG Dubs on Twitter. Um, and she ended up winning, which is super awesome. Um, and you can read about uh, kind of the stuff that the, the, her platform, I guess you could say. Uh, she had a Medium post there that's in the show notes. And uh, they announced today on Twitter that, that uh, she won, which is awesome. Uh, another person too, uh, who I'm not as familiar with, but also seems awesome, uh, was the other uh, member. Uh, I'll put the GitHub links in the show notes. Did you guys hear about this at all? No, I didn't hear about it, but it seems like a good idea. Yeah, it's it seems awesome because the, these folks, both of them, are really like uh, uh, active in the community and doing some cool stuff. Uh, particularly, I know more about Ashley, but I've uh, as you might imagine, I've followed both of these folks because I follow practically all of Twitter. Um, <laughs> but uh, they're they're pretty pretty cool folks. Uh, uh, Feroz is part of Node Forward, which is um, a, kind of an independent organization that's surrounding Node. Um, uh, he's the other individual who's part of. Uh, he's the other individual member. I'm trying to see what other team he is on in. Uh, in the node org, but I'm not sure if I can find that easily. But it just seems like a really cool, cool deal. Lots of buzz about that at JavaScript Minnesota this uh, this week. So, what does the yeah. Node Foundation do? That is a good question. So, you guys remember how Joyent used to sponsor Node, right? They're, yeah. they're kind of like an infrastructure company. Yep. Uh, they, they're didn't, still didn't involved. Ryan Dahl actually work for them? Isn't that why they did it? Right. Right, exactly. Okay, just making um, sure. Totally, totally. But um, then uh, you guys remember hearing about IOJS and the split between yep. between Node Core and IOJS, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So with that in mind, what kind of happened was um, it became pretty apparent that there was a need for independent, uh, non-corporate oversight of the Node project. And the Node.js Foundation kind of sparked from that. Um, so when IOJS and Node.js merged back together, uh, the Node.js Foundation is the is the governing body that resulted. Okay. Hmm. okay. I don't. At know. least that's my understanding. Still don't know what they do, but that sounds good. 
So they basically consist a bunch of committees, and these committees do all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, the Technical Governments Committee is probably the most, uh, yeah, the TSC, Technical Steering Committee, is like the most uh, kind of high profile one. So they guide that development? Side. Right, okay. right. They guide development and uh, a bunch of other stuff like community management. Um, there are like so many committees. It's ludicrous, but um, yeah. Open source is hard. Yeah. It is. <laughs> You know, but you know what's really easy to do? It's really easy to follow people on Twitter. Yeah, so easy. It's true. Maybe yes, we should uh, talk about uh, this week's followies. Let's do it. Followies. Sure, I'll start. Okay. Uh, so first on my list is uh, the Noun Project. I talked about this at some point in a fringe or no, wait, who was it? Ryan or Brandon? One of you pointed out to me. Cool website of like hundreds of thousands of icons, or at least tens of thousands. And you can pay a little money and use it for whatever. And there are just so many and it's awesome. You just search anything you want and it's there. Anyway, they have a Twitter. So I follow that. Uh, back to Google Docs. I also followed um, another David Smith, not David underscore Smith, but this is Catfish Man David Smith. Um, nice. He is a guy on Twitter. I'm on the Twitter page. I don't know if he has a bio either. He tweets about security, I think, and just general tech stuff. I don't know too much about him. He has retweeted a bunch by some people I follow, so I followed him. Nice. And then last is Marshall Huss, or MW Huss. He's on UIKit for Apple TV at Apple. And I like my Apple TV 4, and so I followed him. He's nice. cool. He posts some cool stuff on Twitter. Nice. Now I do have to say I believe I was the one who who uh, introduced you to the Noun Project, and I'm so glad to hear you're liking it because uh, the Noun Project is like major key for us at work. Like OMG it is the best thing, um, even though we don't actually use it in production. It's just so much fun to look at, and I use it in presentations a lot too. Anyhow, my uh, my Twitter folks include one bot uh, whose name is Captain Markov. Uh, it is literally a Markov bot that uh, has a bunch of, uh, well, all of the captain's logs from Star Trek The Next Generation, and it tweets uh, Markov generated, uh, Markov chain generated uh, captain's log entries uh, based on it. And it is awesome. I've been like dying every time I see one of these come up in my feed. It is amazing. Um, so if, if you're it is a fan of the next generation, I'm reading right? through and them, it's amazing. <laughs> Right, like here. Let, I I bet I can do one. Let me see if I can manage a Picard voice right now. It's late enough. I might be able to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Captain's log supplemental. No, no, not there. Commander Data and a radically new Chief O'Brien have been recalled to map the experiment. Oh, come on! Why did I have to read that one? That was the worst one. Here's the one. Acting Captain's log. Start date four three nine nine two point six. Admiral Hansen has repaired the second officer. Which second officer is needed repair? Is that data? I think that might be data. Aw, poor data. <laughs> Anyhow, that one's really good. Um, and if you're a fan of the next generation at all, um, you should A, watch it on the streaming service of your choice because I'm pretty sure it's on all of them. And follow this account because they're really funny. And more importantly, um, TNG is the only good one. So there's that. Yeah. There are a couple of good uh, original series episodes too, though. Just saying. That's true. That is true. I, I like them both, and in fact, I've been uh, I've been using um, the next generation like when I am like running on a treadmill because it's it's cold out, and well, of course, I say that today when it's forty degrees yeah. out. But when I when I was running on the treadmill, uh, I would I would use that because otherwise I get really bored. Uh, so Star Trek is awesome for that too. My next uh, follow is uh, Tony Wan Kenobi, whose name is Anthony Craig in real life. He has a blog called The Overanalyzed, where he talks about a lot of different things, including but not limited to uh, the MacBookless life, which is a thing, as you guys might have mentioned, uh, that I, I have been kind of trying to live over the past couple of weeks or so. Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is he has a really cool walkthrough of how he built his site. Um, I think it's still using Camel, which is Casey Liss's blogging engine. Uh, but this post is really cool, and I'm going to call it out here for that reason, because I think you might get a kick out of it. Cool. 
And then last but not least is Lindgren, L-N-D-G-R-N. Uh, this person is particularly awesome and particularly uh, cool, and I'm particularly honored to mention him because he is actually uh, my professor uh, for a Rudder Art Technology in the Internet class. Uh, totally, totally awesome individual and uh, hugely, hugely, hugely looking forward to what we're going to do in that class. His focus is like, um, for lack of a better phrase, like critical code studies. Um, he might face palm at hearing that if he listens. Um, but basically, uh, the intersection of uh, like programming and what that programming says about us in like a societal frame. Uh, and I've only like, hey, this is the third week of classes. Um, I don't have a full grasp of what all that means, but from what I've been hearing and what I've been reading about on the live on his page in the libraries, it's like awesome stuff. I think you guys might get a kick out of it. Cool. Sweet. I'm really excited to hear your guys's uh, follows now too. I, I see a couple of people in here, particular that I know in Meet Space that are um, I'm looking forward to speaking about. So yeah, go for it, Ryan. Yeah, you know I don't follow a lot of people, but uh, last couple of weeks I guess I did. Uh, I sort of followed the Rust Lang Twitter, and to my sort surprise, yeah, sort of followed. You know, it's not a person. I don't like following not people. Yeah. So I, I okay. sort of followed it with great reluctance if that's okay. And apparently to my surprise, they actually talk about cool stuff on the wrestling Twitter. Uh, and so, uh, Rust 1.6 came out. So, uh, everybody can celebrate and that's wonderful. Nice. And right. sometimes when I tweet things, apparently people I don't know somehow find my Twitter tweets and it's amazing. So Kyle Marek Sparts somehow followed me on Twitter and I, uh, followed back, I guess. Nice. He yeah, also he's, follows me. He's a he's fairly well known ish, I guess. In the yeah, he also follows uh, my friend Dan, and he also follows Brandon. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, he, I he see he does follow Brandon. Yeah, right. so there's that. Oh, so he likes uh, chili chips and salsa, which makes him a, a great person <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> he does, yeah, he does indeed. I I met him about a year and a half ago at Swift.mn. Uh, over uh, over at Smart Things in Northeast, and uh, he is a very 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 cool cool dude. Um, I think he's doing some work with a um, like Gov Connection. I think it's Gov, Gov Delivery. I think it's what Gov it Delivery. Thank you. Yeah. Gov Connection is something very different. Uh, <laughs> Gov Delivery. Yeah, cool stuff. He he is a very 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 uh, as Max said, well kind of well known guy. And he's doing some cool stuff. Very big into functional programming. Um, maybe that's maybe that's how I. I maybe that's how he uh, followed me. Like I retweeted a tweet I saw from Haskell MN. Oh yeah, it's probably it. okay. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And then <laughs> there was another Twitter person I had listed here, but I took them out because I think they're a bot. But <laughs> but here's the thing: they tweeted to me a real tweet about some programming thing, but they only had two tweets. And the last tweet was like from 2009. So I don't know how that works, but I, 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 I don't know. You're what made them tweet again. I guess so. <laughs> Here, it, it's Sean Kaza. And they have four tweets right now, and I can't see any of them. Oh, yep. Here we go. What are the alternatives? This is their big groundbreaking tweet from, you know, months. Okay, not 2009, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Huh. Is it a real person? Sean, I don't know. You should tweet at me again. <laughs> nice. All right, I'm I'm look I'm looking this person up right now. Let's see. Cuz I feel like Oh, I'm it's, it's all from end of December. Yeah. Now, maybe okay. they just started up their account, but why why uh I and, think they're real. They look real. But how do you know? Like four tweets in months and because usually if they're a bot, they've got like a bunch of tweets and they're all from the same place. Yeah. And and they normally have a different kind of profile. Yeah. 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 Turns out. Yeah. I I bet have you guys heard about the, the it's becoming increasingly popular now to like delete your tweets after you tweet them? Is that right? Right. Yeah. I've seen that, one person who does that. Doesn't that defeat the purpose? I've seen like two or three people who've done it before and I can't find them because I it's 
too late and my brain is starting to shut down, I think. Aren't they <laughs> but, doing um, it wrong? I, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm, I'm just wondering if that might be what's going on with this individual. But there's yes, a, Sean, if you're listening. Hi, hi friend. Welcome. There's, there's a program <laughs> called Twitter Archive Eraser that I'll delete your tweets every once in a while. That's It'll awful. go through your Twitter and just, yeah, delete everything. So I think that's uh, I think that's what a lot of people use. You know, some people might need uh, that, actually. Yeah. It, politicians, probably a good yeah. idea. You know, if more, <laughs> if more than eight people have read this tweet, delete it. <laughs> right, right. Isn't there, there was some sort of site or service that Twitter shut down that would archive uh, political tweets. So they yeah, would, like, yeah. instantly save College them. groups, yeah, yeah. I, that, that. I think they actually uh, that that got turned back on this Good. week or last week. I think Jack Dorsey okay. came in and was like, "We want this back because I guess it was useful for things." It's so absurd mm, that that right. would be taken down. Yeah, I remember totally. their their API token was revoked because of the politicians whining at Twitter that, "Oh no, things I've actually said matter." Oh, how could that be? <laughs> right. <laughs> the only time I really delete a tweet is if I have a typo in it and yep. it's really recent. Or it's my, one of my Twitter bots saying something that is uh, so out of place I want to delete it. Well, every time I want to delete a tweet, Brandon's already favorited it. But I know now that it's meaningless, so it doesn't matter if I delete the tweet or not. <laughs> I, knew I, I knew I would eat my words with that one. I knew I would eat my words with that one. That's kind of how I feel now, too. I'm very sad about it. I'm sorry, you guys. No, it's okay. <laughs> still, still, still my favorite tweets. I, I think mean, you should uh, do... <laughs> you should do one of your enthusiasm podcasts about favoriting tweets. I should indeed. I should. He but should only after some coffee. You should do 22.000 episodes about it. Oh. For, I, I have for to each do that tweet that he favorited. Oh, no. That's, that's, that's going to that's gonna take a while. <laughs> I might run out of bandwidth. Oh, no. Well, that's that's his punishment for favoriting. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> well, Max, it's your turn for the Twitters. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, so this week I have followed um, Eve Adams, who is known as Hacker Huntress. And she uh, tweets about interesting stuff, funny stuff, infosec stuff. So I definitely recommend checking her Twitters out. Um, I also followed uh, the Lauren Graham, also known as Lauren Graham, who uh, played Lorelai Gilmore and Gilmore Girls uh, nice. in honor of the Gilmore Girls revival on Netflix this year that I'm very, very nice. excited about. Um, yeah, you didn't think I listened to or watched Gilmore Girls, did you? Well, it's according to your Twitter, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was just say. I, don't, I, don't, I don't keep it a very big secret. Yeah. Yeah. And then the uh, the third person I followed this week is Hacks for Pancakes, also known as Leslie Carhart, who tweets about funny stuff. And uh, the, the, I think the tweet that I liked that I, then led to me following her was, uh, why my best friend is my best friend. She finds a web vulnerability in Pottermore and reports it after being sorted into Slytherin. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Wow. So uh, another infosec Twitter person. So uh, lots of funny infosec stuff on hers. Very nice. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool, cool folks. The lot. So what do you guys this think? Be a dangerous segment of podcast. I need. I'll just be following more and more people. I'm. I'm. I think at. Uh, I follow two seventy three, and I don't want to ever hit above three hundred. So. <laughs> Close. Yes, Brian, give in to the follows. The follows are the path to the dark side. So, yes, Palpatine jokes. So I Ian, can't do the voice. Ian was here recently, and he 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 demanded I tell him how to use Twitter, uh, uh -huh. because uh, he uh, he recently switched over from Google Plus to Twitter as his primary social network, or at least one of the major ones he uses. And uh, he used for months the normal stock Twitter app from them oh, no. and no, yes why? yes oh no why and so i guess he became used to the features that they offer like um when there's a popular retweet going around it will tell you about it i i guess no. and then he also uses this uh starred person feature have you ever heard of this right nope <laughs> i haven't used stock twitter in <laughs> At least since 2000, like early 2011. So 
Whenever I feel, tw- no, 12. Whenever I feel a lot less I bad now that none of you have heard of this. I feel like such <laughs> yeah. a Twitter pleb because I, I, I use the stock app too and have been for like five years or whatever. But, but have Six, you heard of this? Seven years, have you heard of you this know? favorite person thing? No, I, I, haven't, I haven't heard about that. Okay, so out. apparently yeah. in the stock app, you can go to a person's account and you can favorite that account and you'll get notifications whenever that account tweets. Oh, yeah, no, you can do that on web, too, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can totally do that. You get get the text to your phone. And and so how about about you, Brian and Brandon? Do you you agree with this? I've never heard of that. Uh, That sounds too intrusive. I like going to my stream and seeing what I see, and if I miss something important, eh, my fault. So uh, it also... I'm on Twitter right now, and I still can't see it. Totally still can't see it. So let's see, can I see it? So if I... Click them. Maybe, maybe it I, is only on mobile. Maybe I have to go to a person I follow. How do I do? Oh, I follow this person. Yeah, maybe maybe I don't see it either on on the t- website. So I can I can see the favorite person on um what what do I use here? I use Phoenix on Android for Twitter. Can I see it on Tweetbot? That has notifications. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, on Tweetbot, no, I don't see it on. Oh no, I guess I sort of see it on Tweetbot. It's called enable enable notifications on Tweetbot, maybe. Uh, okay, that makes Tweetbot sense. Well, um, are you an iOS or OS ten? I'm talking about on the MacBook Air. Uh, I don't think Tweetbot can give you a notification per account. Like really? you can do notification. Well, what, what, hmm. what if you go to a person you follow and you click the little gear? Let me try doing it on you, Ryan, and then we'll see if you. Okay, let me know when you want to tweet. Yeah, that might be it. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, there's your tweet. Oh, yep. All right. Apparently that works. I didn't even know it was there. Yeah. So. Okay, so I guess wow. like so I guess what Ian so Ian accosted me for being the weirdo. So he accuses me of being weird because I read my timeline from wherever I last left it all the way to the top. In That's order. the very point of Twitter. That's like literally the point of Twitter. That's what I always That's- thought. And it's so, the only way I've ever done it. And the I guess is, what I Ian does. App, it it starts at the most recent, and you have to scroll down back in time till you hit where oh. like Tweetbot especially has importance because of iCloud Sync and Tweet Marker Sync that it will always jump to where you last read on yeah. whatever client. Right. So, so I guess I'm, I guess what Ian does is Ian reads the tweet sort of in order, but if he likes the person, like so he'll he'll favorite me. So that he reads all of my tweets. And so he asked me, how can you respond within 45 seconds to most of the tweets I tweet? And I said, because I'm watching the timeline. Right. I don't know. So so he so he uses Twitter like someone might use Facebook or Google Plus. Where maybe. you like go in and you, and you have a couple, maybe a list of some like close people or you like keep an eye out for them. Like, well, we yes. use Twitter as in like we are always watching. We are always there. I feel like, open with push. I guess so. I'm sort of am always on the Twitter. Yeah. So and I if guess I thought, if I'm not, I will see a retweet or if I have a notification that's not just someone tweeting, I will see it and probably respond to it very quickly. So I guess we'll see what Ian says next week when he uh, listens to this and yells at me again for being ridiculous. I think we're going to follow up. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. Okay, well that that's good to know. Thanks for participating in my experiment. You bet. You bet. So uh, I guess we have to end with what we always end with. Uh, where can we find you on the internet? I think we should start with the guest. What do you say, Max? Sure. You can uh, you can find me on the internet uh, on Twitter as m4xm4n, and you can usually find me on the internet as that elsewhere as well and max Fierke on github very good woohoo cool i guess i'll go next uh i am brandon uh with an a and an o not an e and whatever else that other person spells his name with um (laughs) uh and you can follow me on twitter at brandon underscore mn where i tweet things about stuff you can also find me on pretty much every other social network by that name, except for GitHub, which does not allow for underscores, and therefore I am uh, Brampersandon. B-R-A-M-P-E-R-S-A-N-D-O-N. I think that's how you spell it. And for more info about that, you can catch me on my website, which is brandon.mn, which is probably easier to type. 
Well, you can find me on Twitter at bman479, tech479, Morris, and Weather, or Weather by Brian. I'm also on my website that I haven't updated in quite a while at brianm.me and github slash bman479. Uh, yeah. Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Randomar. And of course, you can find me on the Google Plus, which is where I post pictures of, you know, all of the cats and dogs I have, but also of Bernie Sanders event rally things, which is also very fun to go to. Nice. Did you, you, you didn't have to treat any of the burns you got from that, did you? No, I didn't. I was so far <laughs> away from Bernie himself that I think That's it was, good. I think it was really cold where I was. I was I was wor- I was worried about you, man. I was worried about you. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been a great show. Thanks for coming on, Max. This was great. Yeah, yeah. For sure. We should do fun. this again. Yep, definitely. And of course, you know, you have your new show with Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to make this a thing. We're gonna have to make this a thing. It's going soon. to be so enthusiastic. <laughs> so darn enthusiastic. <laughs> well, I, I have to admit, I'm. I'm kind of falling into full-on smart snark node tonight. Uh, getting getting a little bit uh, um, Gruber, John Grubery in right now, but <laughs> this has been the, awesome. As as you as you uh, podcast, you tend towards the Gruber. That's true. That's true. Yeah. It's just it's unavoidable. It really it's unavoidable. is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what? No. <laughs> <There we go>. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Oh lordy, this has been awesome. Thanks again, you yep. guys. This is, yeah, it's good time. For sure. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to Podkit. For more, listen to the Fringe and listen to the next episode too.